And now I live in what I call the keto zone. So what I mean by that is because I did the work, the deep work going into and doing a keto reset, I literally reset my metabolism. I made my metabolic flexibility that much more robust. I created that much more metabolic efficiency to the point that I'm able to get more energy out of fewer calories being put into my body. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, that now I live in this nice little comfort area where I don't have to think about being keto. Some days, I again, I do an audit at the end of the day and I go, wow, I only had 40 grams of carbs today. Other days I go, geez, I had 175 grams of carbs today. But the, the main key point here is I didn't know the difference. I didn't, I didn't feel anything different because I have this robust metabolism that can take energy from fat off the plate and burn it, can take energy off the fat on my body and burn it, can make ketones from the fat on my body and send that to the brain if necessary to, to replace the glucose that I didn't consume that day or in the event that I consumed glucose that day or carbohydrate to convert to glucose. That machinery worked extremely well. And, and it's just a, a really nice kind of comfortable area to be in to totally. know that as long as, I, you know, as long as I don't go way overboard and start taking in 350, 400 grams of carbs a day, day in and day out, that I can hang out in this zone and really use ketosis as a, as literally a tool, as you describe, and as I certainly describe in my book, as a means of reestablishing metabolic flexibility to give yes. me this amazing opportunity to cruise through life and just not have to think about every little thing I eat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's one of the things I preach and teach. I, I believe that flexibility is an amazing state of health that, you know, you, you do have to adapt and get into. And I, and I, we want to get some tips there because, you know, look, I believe it's actually healthier. I believe that that increase in carbs certain days, you know, mixing it up, the ability to do so is actually better for you. And again, it's imitating our ancestors. When they had more, they right. ate. When they had higher carbs, they ate higher carbs. However, the base of their diet was obviously a lower carb diet. Look, you know, when you look at studies today, a lot of the studies on low carb diets are done in 150 grams of carbs a day, which, you know, you and I would be like, oh, that's a high carb day, right? It's like, right, so exactly. You know, yeah. when, I, when I say I'm eating high carbs, you know, oftentimes it's still defined as a low carb diet, right? So, you know, we, we have to get our listeners to understand that, but give, give uh, you know, this flexibility that you're talking about, right? Let, let's, you know, in your book, you obviously give some tips here, right? But it's like, give, give our viewers and listeners tips on how to achieve this flexibility because I can tell you it doesn't happen for everybody right away, right? They, they don't make the transition well, right? They, they switch over, they have a carb day and it throws them off. They have, you know, how, did, how do we achieve that faster? Well, first of all, to your point, I know a lot of people who claim to be keto, but then when they say that they have 75 or 80 grams of carbs in one day, they are kicked out of keto and feel like crap for three days. That's almost the definition of metabolic inflexibility. Yes. So there's a, there's a lot of work to be done there, right? Yeah. Well, to create this metabolic flexibility, you do have to do the work. There's not a pill that you can take. You know, you can't do ketone supplements and, and measure your blood ketone levels and go, oh, I'm five millimolar. I'm very successful at this keto thing, right? Yeah. I say, and like Dom D'Agostino would agree, and, and he's been one of my mentors in this field. We that, interviewed you know, a few times. Yeah, yeah. that you've got to spend six weeks in keto to really get the benefits uh, that will be long lasting. And when I say long lasting, what I'm projecting I'm gonna be doing right now for the rest of my life is I'll be doing at least a six week full on all in keto reset once a year. Yeah, I Just do. to, you know what I mean? Just the way somebody would do a cleanse, an annual cleanse or a new year, new you, you know, program. I'm suggesting that that would be a great way to do it. Uh, it would sort of emulate a seasonal um, uh, opportunity that an ancestral, not opportunity, but, but a lifestyle that was forced upon a, one of our ancestors, uh, you know, to, to, and what happens is. Yeah, I was just going to say, in your book, you talk about some of the benefits. I know you're going to another point, so don't forget your point. However, because we may have a lot of new people, talk about some of the benefits of doing that six week, you know, what these, right. up these key right. types. Yeah. So, so when you, when you with, Hold carbohydrates to the extent that the, the brain initially says, whoa, there's not going to be much glucose for a while. Let's figure out a workaround. And that workaround is hardwired into everyone. Everyone's born with this 
amazing ability to create ketones and to burn them efficiently and to burn fats efficiently. We just never develop it, right? We just, because we're surrounded by carbs from day one, we, we literally let that fat burning mechanism atrophy the same way we let a muscle atrophy if we don't, if we don't work out in the gym. So everyone has this ability. So what happens when you withhold carbohydrates for long periods of time, you're just sending signals to these, to the genes in the body and the genes go, okay, well, that's easy. We can fix this. We just need to spend a little bit of time upregulating enzyme systems that take fat out of storage, that burn fat. We need to build metabolic machinery, which includes increasing the number of mitochondria throughout the body, largely in the muscle cells. So the mitochondria, which is where the fat burns most efficiently, yeah. actually, it's all, the only place the fat burns. So if you double the number of mitochondria in your cell, you're doubling the fat burning capacity. Then it's a huge benefit. And by the way, those mitochondria then don't just go away when you take two days and you're out of keto, right? They stay there. So you, as long as you don't start send, spend three weeks or four weeks sending the opposite source of signals, like like injecting yourself with you know three or four hundred grams of carbs uh, every day, then the, again the body goes, well, what's the message here? If the message is there's not going to be in glucose, we're going to build mitochondria, we're going to build a metabolic machinery to burn fats, to burn keto, to make ketones, to burn ketones. This is going to be awesome. We can handle this. It's no problem. And then you, you can screw it up by going back and just saying, well, there's, there's going to be a lot more glucose. And the body, which then says, um, I don't like to waste energy, so I'm not going to take my fat out of storage. I don't need to. You're presenting all this glucose, this carbohydrate all the time. So let's just burn that. And let's just, you know, that's all we're going to depend on. And so it's, you know, you, you get to choose how the body reacts or, or adapts to the signals that you're giving it. It's so empowering when you get this concept. Now, when you spend six weeks in ketosis, uh, you get this upregulation of all these enzyme systems. You get this mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the, the building of new mitochondria. The mitochondria have their own DNA. It's called mitochondrial DNA. And they get the message that not only are there going to be more of them, they have to be more efficient at their yeah. throughput of fat. You get a decrease in inflammation, which is one of the biggest things that people notice going on a keto diet, uh, sure. even in the first couple of days. Uh, they, they lose they lose weight and they go, oh, this is weight. This is great. I must be burning a lot of fat. No, you're, you're actually decreasing the amount of water that you're storing as a result of your systemic inflammation from your crappy diet, right? So there's a, a decrease in inflammation, which means a decrease in joint pain for a lot of people, which means just a, a, a feeling of well-being. You know, there's uh, an increase in energy that a lot of people uh, will report after, say, a week and a half or two weeks. There's a little a dip in energy, and we talk about in the book how we can how we can yeah. mitigate that dip, um, but there's but there are all of these, um, and I think the number one benefit for most people, and certainly that for me, is a decrease in hunger, appetite, and cravings. That the 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 keto diet, the keto concept, which makes you so good at at burning your own stored body fat, and so good at making ketones. Do you know the, the liver? I I just found this out about, uh, well, six months ago in my research, the liver can make up to 150 grams of ketones a day. That's like 700 calories worth of energy that, that, is, that is all used to replace glucose. Yeah. So not only do you not need to take in a lot of glucose when the brain gets used to burning ketones instead of glucose, um, not only do you not need to feed the muscles glucose because when they become fat adapted, they become really good at, at, at uh, burning fat. But you have this closed system that you can burn fat off your body. You can make uh, gl uh, glucose to the extent of glycogen to the extent that you need to from the glycerol model, model molecule or the glycerol end of the tri uh, triglyceride. And then you can take the other three fatty acids and either combust them directly for energy or make ketones and offset your need for glucose. It's such a great – it's like, you know, we yeah. talk a lot in, we talk a lot in science – uh, I'm sorry I'm rambling on here, Dan, but I get so excited about this. <clears throat> but we talk right. a lot in science about evolution and how evolution typically isn't very elegant. You know, el evolution doesn't look for the, the perfect solution. It looks for the adequate solution, you know, to allow the organism to survive. Survival solution. And yet, I would suggest that this whole uh, fat-burning, ketone-generating system that we have is really elegant on the human body. It's like we get we, – we're wired to overeat because our ancestors – Sort of, that's that's how you know you. They had this beautiful way of okay, there's food around. I'm going to overeat. I'm going to store the excess as 
energy on these fuel tanks that I carry around with me. And in the next two or three days, if there's no food, no problem. I get to take it out of storage, burn it. I get to burn fat. I get to make ketones. I get to offset the need for glucose. I get all these great benefits because I'm wired to overeat. Yes. Well, that works, again, it, for, it's a survival mechanism. That works beautifully. But in today's day and age, we're still wired to overeat. But we haven't developed the skill to take that, to, to, to take a day or two and just extract those uh, energy units from our stored body fat and combust them and, and live our lives. So um, anyway, I just, I get so excited about this. I, I just kind of, you know, I want to be clear uh, for our viewers and listeners, you know, what you're saying, because I think it's so important, you know, that it, it's incredibly healthy and beneficial to be able to switch to be a glucose burner and a fat burner. Here's the problem. Most Americans have lost that ability. And I want to be clear on how damaging that is, meaning that they're only able to burn sugar. So when they're not eating, they're either burning muscle into sugar, you know, breaking muscle down, gluconeogenesis, you know, or they, they are run down, wiped out, craving carbohydrates, right? It's like, so, I mean, and th their brain is going into an oxidative mode, you know, because of all of the, and their cells are inflamed because all they're burning is glucose constantly, which definitely burns with more oxidation, a little more dirt, if you will, a little more, you know, exhaust on the fuel. Ketones and fat burn cleaner. The healthy ability to go back and forth is the magic. Zach Bitters, we interviewed him, and he's, you know who he is, he's a 100 miler, holds one of the 100 yeah. mile foods, right? You know, he talked about this. He said, you know, people think that when I'm doing the marathon that I'm only eating fat. He says, it's actually not true. I, I, I hijack, biohack the system. He's like, I'm so fat adapted, but marathon day, I'm eating, you know, the sugar. Yeah, in my enough sugar, yeah. They have all these mitochondria that are like, you know, just burn it right up, right? Yeah. It's like, so I get this extra boost of energy with my more mitochondria, you know, so, and then when he's not eating, he's fat adapted. So his body moves back over into fat burning and he's able not to eat as much. Everyone else has to constantly eat. So he's, he's getting a win-win. So that's really the magic is that ability to go back and forth.